Hello everybody, so in this video I'm going to talk about a serious concern about our Indian origin based companies that really face a problem when it comes to international expansion to developed economies. And of course this video will be long so I would really want you to stay till the end. So let's get it started. Many Indian origin based companies, roughly 95% of them, were designed and created for keeping Indian markets or developing economies in mind in the first place. And because of this over complexity of these markets, the expansion to international markets become difficult, especially into the developed economies, despite their decades long of existence and experience. Whereas on the other side, the Western companies often create products and services with a framework or a design for well-developed economies, which is similar to many Western nations, which are higher in their purchasing power which elevates their business valuation and exposure on the global scale. Many business models of Indian companies do well in the Indian market but fail to expand internationally. And many business models of the West will do great around the entire globe but will fail to operate in India. This is because India being a developing nation has a set of problems that are different than the rest of the developed nations. And while Indian companies master their in-house problems, but once they try stepping outside India, then either the problem doesn't exist or there has been existing players with whom they find difficult to compete with because they have established themselves over there and have mastered their in-house problems. And in the name of international expansion, 98% of these Indian origin based companies expand their businesses to poor nations like Africa because of a familiar framework to a developing nation and a lower per capita income nation. Many of the Western companies focus on India and other similar markets for data collection, data research, volume in terms of users, or taking up on a challenge to crack a tough market space, or to merely compete with local in-house businesses and many such similar reasons. Their objectives of revenue, profits and valuation are just not part of their goal in these markets as these aspects are already covered by operating in strong economies like Europe, North America, South America and many such places. Take an example, Apple's total revenue for FI 2024 is around $400 billion and out of this only $850 million is through India, which implies that even if they exclude 20% of the world population as a market, this will only put a 2% dent on their revenue. Same goes for the meta formerly Facebook, where India accounts for 15% of its global users but less than 3% of their ad revenue. But the brutal truth that makes these companies operate smoothly in the Indian market is because they know that the Indian crowd is highly influenced by the practices of the West, especially its urban region. Another factor to look upon is the Indian companies on the stand of global level. The biggest Indian company, Reliance Group, has a valuation of only $200 billion on the global level, despite being in oil industry, retail, telecommunication, media, and over 100 different market space. Their valuation as of 2024 is equivalent to SpaceX, an American private company who sends rockets and satellites into space probably twice a week. Take another Indian giant, the entire Tata Group, it has a valuation of around $400 billion, which is just slightly their Netflix valuation of $380 billion. This clearly shows that Indian companies, despite being big in Indian markets, are far behind in terms of global level. It is quite unfortunate to not have a single Indian based company to be in top 50 global companies and only 9 companies in Fortune 500 list. Even in Indian major companies, the investors who hold a major stake or let's say equity are foreign investors reflecting dependence on foreign entities because of their higher currency value and lower company valuation on the global level. Example, Flipkart has Walmart, Paytm has Alibaba, Ola has SoftBank, Zomato has Ant Group. This similar dependence is reflected in the Indian service industry as well like Infosys, Tata's TCS, Wipro and many more where the entire workforce is dependent on foreign projects. In these aspects, 
these huge Indian companies are merely viewed as a tech support for their technology. These companies derive over 85% of their revenue from the foreign clients. Another factor is that Indian companies have failed to create world-class products. This failure limits the company's growth in international space. Many of our Indian companies for a long time have focused on creating a rip-off version of Western companies or replicating Western businesses. Example, Amazon's rip-off is Flipkart, Spotify's rip-off is Ghana and Wink Music. Although it's not completely wrong, but lack of uniqueness and originality still lack. This lack of original innovation hinders India's ability to lead in global markets. Maybe one can blame government for not spending on research and development, but in reality, it's the companies that make a nation, not the other way around. If India can provide cheap labor, then these companies can also carry out research and development at a cheaper price. These Indian companies need to create a separate entity which would work on developing products for international spaces, especially the developed economies. Similar to how Toyota made Lexus for America, also how Tata owned Jaguar and Range Rover to expand to developed economies. Similar mindset is required by more of these Indian companies. Same behavior is seen in Indian startup space, where valuation of a company is preferred over revenues, profits, or making the business model completely bootstrapped. Many Indian businesses sees a billion dollar valuation as a goal, whereas the Western companies have crossed over multi-trillion dollar valuation. Many of the investors and founders, co-founders of these Indian startups primarily focus on seeking profits, acquiring higher equity for cheaper price over the overall cause and purpose of the company. Despite all this, these companies just don't envision themselves focusing on expansion to international markets as a main objective or to make it really, really big. Maybe it's the lack of confidence to compete with international giants or a lack of aim to make the company really big on a global level. As Western companies create new operation lines for India-like markets, which is completely different from what they do in other nations. They come up with cheaper price, free trials, using local players and labors, custom advertisement, custom products, appealing endorsement, and many such approaches. Similar approach needs to be taken by Indian companies for better penetration into international space. Indian companies can do this easily by creating two different models for the same product, one focused on rural, and underprivileged areas and another for urban places and developed regions. Many such approaches can be taken by Indian companies to expand themselves into international spaces and developed economies. And this is what Indian companies need to do in order to make a name for themselves in the international markets. So this was our video on what Indian companies need to do and what are the problems with the Indian markets and Indian companies. So, hope you like this video and if you do, stay tuned for more content. Peace out.